We're walking down to the chicken tractor and we have them here on vacation with us. Um, they give us eggs every morning and they work the land. So they, they scratch and peck all day. If you have chickens, you know what I mean. Um, they tear some old, um, old wood apart and basically do a little light tilling for us. We are up here in North Carolina and our chickens are loving our chick tractor that, or chicken tractor, that Dan built. It's right behind us. And we have the videos uh, of him building it. Yes, it was a, it's a small, it's a mini chicken tractor. Uh, plants came from Abundance Plus with Justin Rhodes. He calls it the, uh, the chick shop. Uh, we took his plans and modified them a little bit, added an A-frame roof to it. Um, it's just a great, it was a fun build. It's perfect for the chickens. We got, this is a flat roof. Um, actually, the roof actually hinges and opens. So you go inside, we're actually gonna put a little A-frame roof on there just to make it look a little prettier. That's what Helena would like me to do. I wanna screw everything together with three-inch framing screws. It's not white pine or spruce, so it's a harder pine, it can split easier. Got my pre -drill. We're not going to pre-drill in the middle because there's no there's no risk of us splitting the board out here in the middle. But in the end, I'm just going to take the extra step to pre-drill this, just so when you put the screws in, that's chance of it splitting the end grain. So I actually thought I filmed this earlier and didn't turn the camera on, so I'm just going to briefly show you what I did. So I actually have the um, the drill is on a slight angle. So when the screws go through, uh, they're coming through about here, you know, in the middle of the board it's screwing into. So that again, we're staying away from this end um, as much as possible to, pre to prevent splitting. So it's 18 inches. I wanted to go from the, all the way from the corner to here. I happen to have these two 15 inch longs uh, that are um, that are the favorite scrap. I'm just gonna cut 45s on the ends and use those for a corner block. And it doesn't need to go all the way into here uh, to provide this main strength. So I'm just gonna save a little wood, use the scraps that I have. Looks good. Close enough for some chickens. Ah, hopefully they don't complain. They give us less headaches. I do recommend wearing gloves dealing with the, uh, the wire. Stay away from the very end again, reducing the chance of it splitting. Okay, all the wires on. Now we're gonna put three roosts in. When I pulled the wire tight, I sucked in the side slightly. So we're at 48 inches across, you know, with 45 inch braces are, but I'm actually slightly inside of 48. I need to flex, flex the sides out. So again, I'm starting kind of in the back and angling it in. I'm not gonna, I don't wanna drill I don't wanna drill into the other piece, so I'm hanging it over. Uh, let's see if I can pull this off. So I'm going to screw it down on this side and flush. So I'm going right over the lap joint of the wire. Flush on the outside edge. So there's a, a little trick you can do. I put a screw in. Instead of flipping it over and beating the boards with a hammer trying to get it to go, I'm actually Grab and hold that screw and flex it. I'm actually, it's actually flush right now. I'm gonna try to over pull it a little bit. I'm hoping the wire stretches a little bit or the slides and the staples. Yeah, it's actually, it's actually staying there now. It's just a little, it's like a 16th. Now it's 
now it's right in the money and I'm not even pulling it, I'm not even pulling it hard, but just putting that screw in there, pull with a hammer, it's, uh, it put it where I needed it to be. I've got some picky chickens and they like their stuff straight. Get the screw back out of here. So we're gonna build these four. So I assessed the amount of lumber I had left. I actually took the two by sixes and cut them right down the middle, which was uh, two and 11 sixteenths. So I'm actually dropping the weight a little bit too, because I'm not using two by fours on all the corners. We're using two and 11 sixteenths. They can almost a, almost an inch off. The lighter, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Easier to, easier, easier to drag around, makes it easier to pick your pull around. So we'll see if see what happens if it. Uh, you know, you're going to move it the first time and it falls apart, then I know that was uh, that was a mistake. But let's give it a shot and uh, we'll see what uh, we turn out with. This backside is where the uh, nesting boxes will be. These are milk crates. So we get a side piece. He's also got these angle braces in here, these diagonal cut pieces. Uh, I'm not going to use those. The metal panels are going to lock in. If you, if you put screws on the, on the ends and down the bottom, and even across the top, you're going to lock in that side where the angle brace really becomes irrelevant. It's just extra weight um, added to the chick shawl that I don't think is needed. The same for the brackets. So the metal panels basically take the place of all these metal brackets that I ever. I noticed as I was putting the top plate on, I was out of square. So I cut, had some scrap pieces of OSB, plywood, whatever you got, the two by fours would work. I didn't want to waste my two by fours. And so I put uh, corner braces on temporarily to square up this one uh, corner post. So I had to put a brace on this one too. And so I put it on the inside. That way I can put the metal panels on and then reach over and, and take up the braces. So I should have thought of that the first time. The framing is done. This is the nesting box holder and then the landing. Chickens can jump up here and then the uh, the boxes will sit there. It's two milk crates. We're able to walk up and put the milk, milk crates out without opening the chicken coop. So we've got wire. That wire going on this panel, the back, the door will be right in the middle. That's when the door opens up for the chickens to come out. Right through the middle there. So we got more wire over there and more wire here. And then these will all be covered with, with panels. So this is exactly 24 inches wide. Same as my wire. So I'm gonna run this one there. And then this one, I'm gonna run and then bend it around the corner. I don't wanna have a, I don't wanna have a jagged edge uh, sticking out back here. Other 24 inch or the lap over my cut joint and help protect it from having a, a jagged edge. Okay, we got the, the metal sides on. Made a few little minor changes. I wrapped the metal siding around the outside edge so there wouldn't be a seam, a sharp seam right in the corner. We got hinges that we had off the old door. Put those on there, but it's on hinges. There's a new Australian Shepherd. We got here, we got her, I don't know, how many days has it been now? Three? Two days ago? She's had two nights with us so far. This will be our third night tonight. We got two two by fours. And this is a two by eight that goes up to the top. So I screw through the, the frame of the chip shaw into that two by eight. So this two by eight is actually holding the two two by fours. So I screwed the first one on, then the second one on, and then I drilled a five eighths inch hole through here. All the ones I found were either five eighths of an inch or three quarters. Bought a, a five eighths inch bolt. I bought the 10 inch was which was longer, but I wanted to have a smooth shank. I didn't want the threaded uh, to end up inside the, the bearings of the of that axle, so I just used the bolt as a as the axle. 
So I'm putting a washer on the outside, washer in between the wood and the wheel, and then a washer on the inside behind the bolt or behind the nut. So I took the metal panel and I bent the last um, rib over. So when you're standing in front of this thing, grabbing onto the, the pole, which I'm gonna put across there now, when you're standing in there and pulling it, you don't lean back and lean, a big, lean against a sharp piece of metal. I'll just made it a little bit safer. This is the rough sanding. But your hands are out of size like that. Mm -hmm. The 80 grips, and so we're saying we're smoothing out some more. But that was just shaping it. Yeah, that's nice. I decided just to shape the that front two by four for the handle instead of having to put in a another rod across the front of that. Which side should we cut? Uh, very funny. It's a fine tooth blade for cutting metal. It works great for plastic too. Big teeth will really make it really jagged. Oh, so they don't fall? Front or back. So the chickens don't push them out? I guess front and back. Otherwise, it's probably going to fall when you move them. Yeah, maybe we'll put some kind of little hook on the top right here. That'll, be, that'll, that'll lock them in. Yeah. We'll figure that out. If you look at his plants, maybe he does something there. I don't know. I didn't see it. But I'm a guy. I mean, I don't really read the instructions. <laughs> I just did that. I just looked at a picture. <laughs> So here's a little view of the coop, the siding on the inside. And the homemade lap siding. Just scripted it out of two by four. Because you want it to be too big, it would look odd if you did normal lap siding. So we did smaller lap siding, so we've got to give it more character. Mm -hmm. More, is that more to see? We're watching our little niece today. Oh, oh I think I might be out of Hi, Lily. Hi. <sighs> Hi. Looks great, though. I love it. So, I'll get the rich hat made tomorrow. It's a little steep for the chickens, but hopefully, they can get up there. It's not, yeah. The chickens are a little bit overweight, so I don't know if they're going to make it up that ramp. Oh yeah, we got the broody hen. She's gonna keep everybody else out of the nesting boxes. 